Hello everyone and welcome to another one of my video tutorials. Today I'm going to be talking about events and how to use them and how they apply to most objects in your toolbox. Uh, before I begin though I'd like to tell everyone that I have a new app coming out for the iPhone called ShakeZoo and I think that's going to be really cool. So now that I'm done with my little advertising sp spiel I'll begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just start with what events are. If you click the form one and you go to this little lightning bolt the lightning bolt lists all the events for any given object and an event is something that basically happens when it's triggered so we for example some of the actions events for the form one are click double click mouse click mouse double click resize scroll and basically I can write code that will happen when one of these events or they're kinda of like verbs actions occur so when the form one loads I could have it do something specific or when the mouse is double clicked I could have it do something specific and that's what events are. So to begin, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a timer object down. The timers are great because they're really simple. They have one single event and that's tick. And if you go to the properties for the timer, it's also very simple. It has an enabled, an interval, and some other stuff, but really these are the only two properties that we care about. The interval is what specifies how often the timer should react. I'm going to type 500 in there and that means every 500 milliseconds I would like it to do something. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a progress bar on my form and the progress bar has lots of events but I don't really care about them I just want to manipulate it through the timer so I'm going to make it really big and daunting. So now that I have this progress bar on here and a timer object I'm going to double click the timer when you double click an object it automatically takes you to its default event and the timer's default event is timer one tick so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if progress bar one dot value is less than 99 so basically if we can still add to the progress bars value I would like to progress bar one dot value plus equals one so that way it doesn't ever actually this should really be less than 100 not less than 99 so basically it'll count from zero to 100 and then it'll stop and this since I put this inside the timer one tick event it'll happen every 500 milliseconds because that's what the interval for my timer is so that's really all the code that you have to do to see an example of what it is oh but you'll notice right off the bat that nothing happens and the reason is because I forgot to enable my timer so once you enable the timer you go ahead and run it it starts to slowly load that's cool and all but it's not really fast so all I'm gonna do is I have to go to the interval and I change it to something like 50 now when I go to run my program you notice it increments really really quickly until it gets to 100 and now it's done and basically that's really all there is to basic events let me put a button in here and I'll have it so that this button triggers the timer so I make the button really big I could change its text if I wanted to which I will do so instead of saying button one, it'll say start timer. And I'm going to go back to the timer now and I'm going to change its enabled to be false. So this button will start the timer. So I go to the button, I double click it, and as soon as I do that, it brings me back to the button one click event because that's its default event when you double click it because that's its primary function is clicking. So now I can write code that will happen each time I click the button. So the code I'm going to write is if uh, actually just timer one dot enabled equals exclamation mark timer one dot enabled. And basically what that says is if timer one is enabled, it'll make it not enabled because the exclamation mark does the opposite of whatever it's currently returning. So if timer one dot enabled returns true, it becomes false. And if it returns false, it becomes true because the not basically does the opposite of what it currently is. And then I'm going to say if timer one dot enabled, I'm going to set button one dot text to equal stop the timer, and then else I'm going to set button one dot text equals start the timer. And now when we go to run, I click start the timer. It starts doing its thing. I click stop the timer and it stops. Start the timer, continues, stop the timer, and it stops. And that is really all there is to basic events in C-sharp. <laughs> 